Please welcome the man who thought a kamikaze was a Japanese toilet, Craig Charles. Why is it about fighting? I go jogging to keep fighting fit, although mostly I end up fighting for air. And like the Beastie Boys, I fight for my right to party. But these days, I'm mostly fighting to stay awake. And some say I've got a fighting chance of becoming the next Mr. Universe. Okay, so now I'm fighting reality. But when it comes to real fighting, you can't beat the six robotic thugs waiting to fight it out for a place in our series semi-finals. Time to find out who's fighting to win this week. Intriguing lineup, Craig. Newcomers like Mazakari, Iron Ore against the 23 seeded Mortis Boys, they're always strong. Kronos against the 7 seeded Steg 2 and Crusader 2. Let's have a look at them, Jules. In the pit, things are looking a little bit tense. Here we've got Crusader 2. Uh, what's your message to the other guys? Just run. Run, yeah, I think so. This machine can't be flipped. It works both ways, so that's a, a key strength. And they slew the dragon in the George Cross. Can this lay Steg 2 from Hampshire? The last war, Steg 2 was green, but now they've gone bulletproof. Good luck to these guys. They went out to hit the disc in the semis. And Kronos. Hello, boys. Hi, hello. Here we have the laundry and dry cleaning engineers. Now, Mark, you've just found out that Julian has been pinching bits of the machines for the robots. That's right, yeah. I've only just found out five minutes ago that we've got some parts missing off of main washer extractor at work, and I didn't understand why it wasn't working. Now I know. <laughs> What have you got to say for yourself? Uh, desperate means. I was working late at night, and obviously none of the shops were open. I mean, what do you do? I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough call. You see from your brother. No, I'll put them back. I mean, I can replace oh, yeah. them. It's, well, uh, if they're in working order. Yeah, desperate means. <laughs> they better be. Good luck, guys. Let's hope they're in working order. Thank you very much. Now, remember, Sir Killalot, they don't like it. Up and let the wars begin! From Southampton, Kronos. Heaviest in the heat at 80.3 kilos, Kronos lost a scutter in the first round of the last war. The pneumatic weapon can crush its 7,500 kilo force and the lifter can hoist a double-decker bus. And here's the team with their previous creation, Zeus, losing to scutter in the third wars. Not enough power or control. Julian Raffle at the controls and into the pits. Now they went. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is our robot Kronos, and this is the team captain Julian. Hi, uh, this is a different machine. Uh, he's a pneumatic crusher and flipper. The uh, difference with this, he runs on airbags to flip this big weapon over, so he flips at the back, crushes at the front. I'm a piercing tip. Uh, it should make a nice few holes and probably squash a few robots. From Loughton in Essex, Crusader 2. The pneumatic lifting arm can lift the robot's own 78.9 kilo weight. Two spikes are also attached to the ram. The shell's polycarbonate. Two motors drive the six aluminium wheels. And in the pinball challenge in the last wars, they didn't exactly provide us with a barrel full of laughs. Steady, but lacking in ambition. Had a love affair with those barrels. And that was about it. From Crusader. Right there with the Crusader 2 team. This is our robot. It's a six-wheeled, fully convertible robot. The middle wheels are slightly bigger than the ends so that we can get a very fast rate of spin. The drives are given by the, uh, a dual-redundant chain drive. So if one chain snaps, another one takes over. We've got a high-pressure air ram that can lift about 80 kilograms and has three controllable positions. From Romsey, seed number seven, Steg 2. Back again after reaching the semi-finals last time, it has a CO2-powered pneumatic flipper, an electric 750-watt motor, and the shell is aerospace aluminium and polycarbonate. As Stegosaurus in the Third Wars, they crushed Napalm, destroying the effort from the Dartford Girls School in Essex, but then were scarred badly by Hypnodisc and went no further. Oh, this is Steg 2. We're back for the wars this year because we got demolished last year by Hypnodisc in the grand final program, come joint third, Firestorm. Uh, we've a totally new robot this year, bigger and better than last year. New, more powerful lifting tail, running at about 1,000 psi. 
She's faster, she's bigger, she's better, and hopefully she's going to go all the way. Rebellions, stand by. There's the Kronos team, Julian and Mark Raffle, bankrupt in the family business, it seems. Steg 2, Rob Peasman, Dan King and Peter Rowe. And Crusader 2, Richard Jessup, Reg Clayton and Chris Williams. Two, one. Stake two, the seventh sees there on the left. Crusader immediately on the attack. Here's that stronger flipper arm. We saw, but the stake two boys slammed against the arena wall into the CPZ, and that means the dead metal, one of the house robots, can come in, weighing in at a sturdy 112 kilos dead metal. Battery powered engine, mighty powerful. If you go into that area, you can be attacked by the house robots. Moment, Steg 2 backing on in there as well, which is dangerous. Kronos with a razor tight claw. Now, we've seen Razor go out of the competition. Look at this power though by Steg 2. Kronos flip, rolling, tumbling onto the arena floor. Great attack there by the Steg team. Kronos surviving though. Crusader on the attack on Steg 2. Steg 2 on fire, it seems there. A worry for Steg. Certainly, the top of the robot is flickering with flame. Kronos driven into the CPZ again. That's a danger. Crusader 2 doing all the work here and very, very impressive. Stake 2 and Kronos side by side. The pit begins to descend. Steer away from that. Crusader, 5mm ground clearance. Six wheels, aluminium wheels. Polycarbonate shell doing well. Now Kronos is in the CPZ again. In the claws of dead metal. It's a worthy technique and tactic to drive your opponent in there. And I think now that Kronos can be attacked by all the house robots. May well be. So too, Steg 2 driving on in there. That's Bash. But Dead Metal pins Kronos in its mighty pincers. And causing damage there as well. Onto the back of Kronos. The shell composite aircraft grade aluminium and Macrolon won't hold on there. This is Kilolot. Lifting Kronos up. Sergeant Bass wants to have a little bit of Kronos as well. The initial damage going into the CPZ. Then the house robots can come into play. Crusader, the slam on stake two. Something came off there, but it's Kronos. Cease. Time has run out on Kronos in the heat. And they can go back to their laundry and dry cleaning. If it's still there. Kronos, out of control and out of the competition. What happened? Your ambition was to be a seeded robot. We've well, got a slight technical hitch, and that is there's a big hole in the top of the robot. Which is a slight technical hitch, is it not? Early on, I've lost, con I lost control of the speed controller, and I just couldn't control it. Mm. I, lost, I lost all the, the interface between that, the radio gear and the machine, and it just wouldn't do as it was supposed to do. And uh, it's, you know, it's paid the price for it, I'm afraid. It is a shame. It's good, because it's given me the, enough incentive now to take the good bits off of it and build something a bit more, a bit more manly. Which bit was the washing machine? Uh, that's down the side, the bit that I think it might have actually gone. <laughs> oh no! What yeah, do we say to that? Uh, we've got problems this week. <laughs> Big problems. I think it was the bits that had us in a spin. How are they going to wash their smalls? No small step for Crusader and two, Steg two through. Next up, the seated Mortis, Iron Ore and Mazakari. For the melee, we have an exciting lineup. This is Massa Curry. Massa Curry. Does anyone know what that means? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> if anyone in the audience knows, I think you'd probably like to know by now. Yeah, <laughs> Inspired by Hypnodisc. Looks like a mean piece of work. Here's the Grimm family with iron ore. Now, when they tested this robot for the qualifiers, right was going left and left was going right, so uh, fingers crossed. Now, what can you say about the infamous Mortis team that hasn't been said a million times before? What an astonishing robot. Now, is your axe working? We don't actually know. Um, I wanted to change a mechanism, so we did some work on it, and then we changed our mind, so we put the old one back in. So you don't know? We haven't run it up yet. I think that's too confident. Well, it's worked for, what, 30 hours up until the competition, but it's often worked right up until... Okay. The competition. Well, I was confident. And then it stops. Well, I wouldn't say. Uh, I don't know confidence is the right word. Uh, um, Not arrogance. Apathy. <laughs> I think apathy, apathy. made it closer. Arrogance. Well, 40 grand's worth of robot. It's a beauty. Ever present through Robot Wars history, Mortis. Is this their year? From Nottingham and Cambridge.
Cambridge, seed number 23, Mortis. Is the hugely powerful axe capable of cleaving any obstacle in its way? The lifting arm can hoist 100 kilos and the whole machine's made of aerospace grade materials, a zero turning circle. Always have plenty of promise, Mortis. They made Ming sing and squeal in agony. But promise more than they've delivered in the end. Steering problems. And there, the great digger set them to the doom. Hi, this is Team Mortis, back for War 4. This is Arthur Chilcott. This is Paul Paul and the token blonde. <laughs> and this is Mortis. Um, very similar to last year. We've reworked it, made it more reliable. Major difference is that we've coated the outside of the armor this time in silicon carbide, which is second in hardness only to diamond and CBN, so effectively it's diamond coated. Um, a few improvements on the axe. Hopefully it's going to work properly this war. Lifted on as before. Um, but let's see how it goes. From Darlington, Mazakari. A solid steel chassis and three millimeter thick aluminium body shell give Mazza a solid look. The weapons are cutting this, but a very high ground clearance means this is weak defensively. Mazakari may commit kamikaze. Hi, I'm Richard. That's Phil and Phil. This is Mazakari, and we have a 70 centimeter disc with uh, very large blades on. We have uh, three millimeter aluminium uh, check plating with uh, very large metal wheels that can also run upside down with a little wheel on top. From Lowham in Somerset, Iron Ore. The Grimm family have their mighty axe weapon, a zero turning circle. It's electrically powered. Most parts come from packaging machinery. They have steering problems. But could this be the Grim Reaper of the competition? Hello, I'm Gilbert. This is my son Robert. This is our robot Iron Ore. The main weapon is a very powerful axe, which uh, is powered by CO2 at 175 psi, large bore cylinder, very powerful, chops through steel quite nicely. It's a track vehicle, uh, run from the Bosch 750 watt motors, very useful piece of machinery. Roboteers, stand by. Mortis, Rob Knight, the team captain, Arthur Chilcott and Paul Ford there in the middle. Mazakari, the students, Richard Neely, Phil Sievers, Phil Neely, the dad. And Iron Ore with Gilbert and Robert Grimm. Three, two, one. A fairy tale end or a grim end for the father and son team from Somerset with Iron Ore. But it's Mazakari attacked immediately by Mortis who say they've been having problems with the axe. The axe comes out. So too does the weapon of iron ore, CO2 powered. Somerset, you can see there, written across the top of iron ore. Oh, they trade blow for blow. Don't forget, Mortis have the lifting arm as well to flip Mazakari up and over. Can the students of the Queen Elizabeth Sixth Form College get Mazakari working properly? Flipped up and over. Again, a pincer attack there, really, on Mazakari. This is how it started. Mortis in and under it, flipping Mazakari over. Mortis with that great lifting arm, it can hoist 100 kilos. Just seen there the iron ore team. Masakari being pushed around between Mortis and iron ore so that the axis can come into play once again. This is Mortis underneath Masakari once again. The lifting arm takes a grappling hold, turning and twisting, and then pushing on to iron ore. They're almost twinning up here against poor old Mazakari. This is Killalot. The ref bot goes in to have a closer look. Uh, is anything untoward happening? Yes, of course, it's Robot Wars. Plenty of things going on untoward, we hope. Iron ore watches on. Quite rightly, Killalot's had a look at the ref bot. Can you see the ref bot scuttle away there? It's Killalot had a towards shunt. There's no, no hope for Mazakari, I'm afraid. The great weapon of shunt there. Now kill a lot. Eyeball to eyeball. Mazakari picked up by Mortis. Shunt there to the right-hand side. Uh, iron ore dangerously close towards the pit. Dangerously close towards the pit. Dead metal and kill a lot combined over the pit for iron ore. Spinning around. Kill a lot. Look at this. 
toying with it, slamming it to the ground in the arena floor. Seconds to go. Mazakari's wheel still spinning. A lick of flame from Bash. Iron Ore, who's immobilized here? Who was immobilized the first? Boys from Somerset. Mazakari from Darlington. Well, I wouldn't want to call that one, so it's over to the judges. Our university boffins, Martin Smith on the left, Professor Noel Shark in the middle, Dr. Myra Wilson on the right. Now peers on. So, style, control, damage and aggression, that's what they're marking. Uh, Mazakari certainly taking damage throughout the contest, probably more than Iron Ore. Iron Ore was the more aggressive. I think Mazakari in danger, Look at that damage is staying. And again, that time from Bash. Well, the decision is unanimous. Mazakari is eliminated. The glum faces of Mazakari. Mm. We did badly. Does anyone want to speak to me? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have any power. Oh, well, is that what happened? Yeah. We this was spinning his face. Because Mark was picking on us because we were probably the best. Because you were the best. <laughs> we were the best. Equally you were. Yeah. I mean, everyone yeah. had a go, they didn't they? Shunt had a go, dead metal. Sandwich between two axes yeah. at one point and then spun around like a trophy and that was it. We were still happened? running. It's just we were picked up. Yes. Yeah. We weren't picked up. We could have done something, but... No options. It's always next year. So the two robots out so far, Mazakari joining Kronos eliminated, Mortis, Iron Ore, Crusader 2 and Steg 2 all through the Heat semi-final. Steg 2 against Iron Ore and the seeded Mortis will fight Crusader 2. As our survivors psych themselves up for the next round, let's have some fun. Now pinball's normally all about keeping your eye on the ball, but on Robot Wars, just keep your eye on the house robots. Let the trials begin! The arena floor dotted with ways to score points, knocking barrels over, getting a sphere into the illuminated pit up and over the bridge. Plenty of ways to score points, and you'll need to. Because Hypnodisc has 135, leads the way in the Pinball Warrior Tournament. 101, 125 points. Spikosaurus dangerously low with 40 points. 16 robots competing in all. Rob Lincoln, seed number 30, Stinger. Just 50 seconds in the last wars, but they're back with a speedy machine up to 18 miles an hour, custom made wheels fashioned from motorbikes, and they have an axe if necessary. And five, three, two, one. Every robot so far has gone towards the barrels. Five points for each barrel knocked down, but not seeing a goodness me very nearly into the pit and out. Were well, they going for the bridge, I wonder? I'm too sure there's the axe trying to knock barrels down now. Need to get points on the board. They have scored naught. Ten now. Five points for each barrel and into the pit. Can they get themselves out? They can. Nudged in there by Dead Metal. You can get up and over the bridge with a completed run. You scored 20 points. There's the 50-point target. That's well done. Dodging in behind Bash. That's steady stuff so far then from Stinger, from Lincoln. Down there is the multi-ball release. Again, 10 points for the release. Every ball into a pit will get you another five points. Dodging dead metal and Killalot's behind you. Killalot has the freedom of the arena floor. Great, narrow shape, axe blade swings backwards and forth like a pendulum. Steady, not spectacular. 50 points though, the key there. That was the highlight of the run. Notching up 50 points to rescue an otherwise drab performance. Yes, the multi-ball released. They seemed unsteady over decision making. Which way to go on the arena floor? Losing their bearings to them. And the judges go. 75 points for Stinger. Not enough to upset the leaders, Hypnodisc. Watch out for Spawn of Scutter next time around in the Pinball Warrior Tournament. Another pinball player who's lost his ball bearings. Let's get back to the wars. So the seeded robots remaining. Mortis against Crusader 2. And Steg 2 seeded 7th against Iron Ore. Gilbert and Robert from Somerset. 
Have you had any technical problems preparing for this round? Well, cure scraped us a bit, but nothing too serious. Uh, not as bad as the first bit where we had a pressure regulator fail. That was a bit worrying. What does that mean for you if your pressure, re pressure regulator fails? Oh, that controls the uh, power of the axe, so we would have been without a weapon without that. Key? Oh, absolutely. So if there's no pressure, there's no force in the that's axe? That's right, yeah. E, but that's sorted. That's sorted. And you're confident you're going to get yep. through this round? Yep, all ready to go. Because I know it's your ambition to win Robo Wars. Well, it, it would be nice, but uh, maybe not this year. <laughs> Maybe wait for next year. But Come so. on, guys. Don't <laughs> give up yet. The Hampshire team. Fantastic. My home county, Steg 2. You took quite a lot of beating from Crusader, didn't you, in the last battle? Yes. Have you had to make many changes? Yes, we've had to have uh, some plates welded on the back, a uh, load of welding around the back and at the front as well. And we're hoping it holds up for this round. So it's not going to hold you back? We hope not, no. Roboteers, stand by. Will they be iron all washed up from Somerset? Father and son, the Grimms. Steg two, Rob Heesman, Dan King, Peter Rowe in there. Three, two, one, activate. Well, a very slow, not too steady start. That's the slowest we've had in Robot Wars. Especially of mutual respect, gauging each other out, I wonder. And all just standing, watching Steg 2. is attempting to blow the axe! Oh, goodness me! That's power from Steg 2, CO2 power flip, but Iron all rights itself using the axe! They're jumping around there like firecrackers! Look at it! Like Mexican beans out there! In goes Steg 2 again, Iron ore flipping itself up. <laughs> and they jump again. Terrific stuff. Now Iron ore, the axe blade comes down. He jumps once again! Is there an earthquake out there, I wonder, on the arena floor? Hardly. Will the earth move for either of these robots as they try and get through? The series semi-final, don't forget. That's the aim here in this heat. That's always a worry. They know the pit is there when it starts to descend. Very tentative stuff, though. They may be leaping around a little bit, but... Ponderous. Iron ore up onto its side. Steg 2 trying to justify its number 7 seeding in the competition. You can see there the tracks of iron ore. That's a comparative rarity these days, a track robot in Robot Wars. Iron ore pinched by dead metal. Can't get the axe to work. Had the problems early on. Now the axe comes down, a little bit too late, perhaps, oh goodness me, shunt on the attack! And Matilda's toppled over! Step two, getting in underneath and showing us Matilda's underbelly! Do we really want to see it? And as they done, the blade has gone from Iron Ore! Have a look at this! Children don't have nightmares with what you're going to see in Matilda's underbelly, please. But kid a lot, exact revenge, and Iron Ore's weapon goes snapped off like some flower stalk there. Flower power! Iron Ore turns Robot War hippie! And the Grimm Brothers. Hippies that'll hold your leggies on in Robot Wars. You're out of it. Both robots are still moving at the end, so we've gone for a judge's decision. But whilst they make a decision, let's look at some of the highlights of that bruising encounter. Robot Wars fleas hopping and leaping around the arena floor they were early on. Who was the more aggressive here? Style and control? Are you sure? But at the end, look at the damage sustained by Iron Ore. I think that's terminal, really. Oh, yeah. The judges have chosen... Stake 2! Well... Plus, I mean, that hammer looked like an awesome weapon. You were bashing that thing with it, but it didn't seem to make a mark. And then, of course, you mess with kill a lot, and you, don't, <laughs> and you lose your axe altogether. Yeah, it's, um, it's a matter of hitting them in the right place. It's uh, obviously a bit difficult. And we lost power for the drive for the batteries at the end, so we just sort of, uh, couldn't of get out of the way. Run out of steam. Yeah. You'll be back next time, won't you? Oh, definitely. Bigger, better, and harder. And after kill a lot. All right, nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, stick to. Now, I don't remember seeing anything that hard on Walking with Dinosaurs. I mean, <laughs> it's a serious piece of kit, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. 
how could that resist that amount of pressure? It's bulletproof plastic. It's bulletproof plastic. Yes. Uh, how much did it take to get that together? Is that expensive? We paid about 100 quid for an 8 foot by 4 foot sheet. So you've got more in store if it does get cracked? Oh, we got some spare ones. We got some yeah. spare. <laughs> some spare. Well, I mean, that sort of arm shoot, I mean, that looks really powerful as well. That sort yeah. of the flipper. So, um, you could go quite far. I quite fancy your robot now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck. Hope, <laughs> hope you progress. Ladies and gentlemen, Steg 2. Well done for that. More flower power. I told you the hippies are taking over. Steg 2. Boo-hoo for iron ore. Iron out of the competition. Next up, Mortis with the active it's working against Crusader 2 with the pneumatic lifting ramp. Crusader 2, you're up against Mortis. First reactions? Uh, we're a bit worried, but we've seen him in the past. We think we've got a chance. We're in with the chance. So um, we shall see. And we've got two electrical engineers here yep. and a mechanical engineer. Yep. What are you missing? Uh, a small child. Just <laughs> luck. For moral support. <laughs> That's it. That's what we need. And uh, tell me about uh, your robot. Special features. Well, it can lift the whole team. It can lift the whole team. And we need lifting right now. You do need lifting. And it's an intelligent bot, it's I hear. It's an intelligent robot. It's actually got more processing power than the, uh, the first space shuttle. So uh, we're quite proud of that. So, um, but we shall see when we're out there. We'll be able to get on. You'll be fine. I have faith. You were okay. my man of the match in the last one, so go for it. Now, the Mortis team certainly look the part. Rob, you've got to talk me through this crazy backpack of yours. What happens? Uh, okay, it's for holding the transmitter. We've got hair release wires. Not it's not working at the moment. The arms come down. Uh, it's basically hands free, so once it's clipped in, you can just drive it. Don't worry about it. Does it help? Yeah, yeah, I'd say it does actually. This is quite a heavy controller. It just takes, you know, well, no, no, probably not actually. <laughs> Are the other drivers <laughs> jealous of you? Um, I don't think jealous for the right word. I do like it. Envious. And um, the best part is at the end of it, the arms are strapped like that. <laughs> Good luck to you guys. Now, uh, you're confident, how's your axe holding up? Well, it wasn't working properly in the last one. It's been working for months, and it's just started blowing up today. You always have the problem with your axe. Yeah, we've had screws stripping the thread and bits flying off and bits breaking. And, and that all decreases the power, and basically. Right, it just stops it working completely. Yeah. So we've brought it up. We've had three attempts to fix it. We're on the third attempt, and it hasn't been tested. And we don't know if it works or not. And you hadn't tested it last time, and it didn't work. No, we hadn't. Testing is a key thing here on Rebel Wars. You reckon? Roboteers, stand by. There's Mortis, seeded 23. Quite a low seeding, really. Arthur Chilcott there on the left, Rob Knight in the middle. Crusader 2. Starting as underdogs for this, then, I guess. Richard Jessup, Reg Claydon, Chris Williams. Three, two, one. Activate. Mortis has all the machinery, the armory. Cost £40,000, this. Always underachieved. Crusader 2 with the front lifting ram as well on the attack. They perform well here. See the little LED flickering illumination down the side of Crusader. The cross of St. George reflecting the old Crusades of the Middle Ages. The infidel on this occasion is Mortis. Robot Wars own Inspector Gadget. Not Knight of the Controls. Bashes down on Crusader. The axe is certainly working there. Now they can drag Crusader whither they want on this arena floor. Maybe towards the house robots. Dead metal awaits. Crusader 2, though, getting away. It's pinned down there. There's Rob with his flying controls. Now, Shunt comes in with the axe to take on Crusader. Crusader is in trouble here. Not punishing enough, perhaps. Mortis, certainly more punitive. Something's come off there. Let's see if we can find out what it was, whether or not it's crucial, I don't think so. It seemed like some sort of sidetrack to protect the aluminium wheels. More worrying is the damage taken to the polycarbonate shell. This is Shunt, of course. Rob Knight and uh, Mortis quite happy with this. Another axe blow from Shunt. Here comes Mortis. You can see there the lifting arm. Now Shunt with the axe and then nudging Crusader on towards Killalot. Killalot with the great lance. The rotating drill, the cutting claw, that's dead metal with its great cutting blade. Surface damage it seems like at the moment, but Crusader cannot get away from the house robots. 
the sparks fly and certainly the mortis challenge is ignited here in these robot wars crusader punctured look there great dents carved out of the crusader shell Jeez. what a shame for those three it's mortis going through well crusader 2 gets turned into a tea bag mortis go through come on lads Well, you know what your biggest mistake was? Putting an England flag on it. Oh, you so. put an England flag on it, you're never going to get past the qualifying rounds, are you? That's right, yeah. yeah. I know it's only seeded 23, but it's a bit of an awesome robot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We lost drive on one of our wheels early. And, oh, well, that's um, why the house robots came in. It was kind yeah. of a mercy killing for yeah. you in the end. We was just in a spin, completely. But, but that axe is so powerful, you're going to yeah. have to come back next year with a thicker skin, lads. Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you, have you enjoyed your, enjoyed yeah. your time on oh, Robot Wars? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Crusader 2. Okay. Cheers, lads. Well, Mortis. Yeah. Come on! Oh. Perennial <laughs> underachievers. Thank you. That's a really nice way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Hence, such a low seeding at 23. Uh huh. But you're going strong. Yeah. You've, you've changed the, uh, the, the look of the robot. What's that you've done to it? It's oh, got uh, it's a normal Kevlar body shell that we've always used for the last two or three wars, but the surface is impregnated with silicon carbide, which is what they make grinding wheels out of. Yeah. Um, and it actually toughens the material up quite a, quite a lot in impact as well as uh, cut resistance. So they hit you and you get stronger? Yep. It's not bad, is it? Works like bulletproof glass. <laughs> well, look, really? yeah. look, I reckon this could be your year. Oh, I don't say things like that. No, I do <laughs> reckon it could be your year. No. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mortis! They look strong, don't they, the Mortis team? And there they are, beating Crusader 2 to move through with Steg 2. And there we have it, the Siege in the Heat D final. Mortis confident. Jules, you're telling me that confidence may be misplaced. Apparently there is a problem with Mortis news from the pits. Where have they gone? Rob, what's happening? Not looking so cool, calm and collected just at the moment. Right, what's okay. going on? Hey, Matt, fight. Um, that was a bit of a heavy damage one. We've got the axe stuck into Crusader, and then we got rammed by one of the house robots. So the whole lot twisted, and we split the end of the tube. That's been welded up now. And then we've got more problems with the axe mech. It worked, but it broke itself in the process. So we're modifying it, so hopefully that shouldn't happen again. And we're going to put all that together, and I've got some sandwiches. <laughs> and then you'll be calm. And, I'll be and calm. wipe the sweat and grease I'm off your face. sweating like a pig. OK, it's time for another break from the main competition. Now. When Mrs. Pavarotti gave birth to Luciano, she thought she had it tough. But even she didn't have to do as much pushing as the robots in our sumo basho. So let the trials begin! The great test of endurance. You have to stay on the arena floor as Shunt pushes out at you. Giotto only managed 3.95 seconds, but have a look at the other end of our leaderboard. Onslaught 17.31 seconds as we welcome Smidzy. SMIDSY stands for sorry, mate, I didn't see you. A team formed over the internet. Remember from Kent, Sussex, and Yorkshire. Four go kart wheels driven by two motors will try and gain traction on the arena floor. Shunt, a bulldozer with a rear mounted scoop. Fearsome acts. Roboteers, stand by. Like Reed, Robin Bennett, Andy Pugh. Three, Smithy. two, one, activate. Time along with the boys from Smithy. That's a great technique. Going to the side of Shunt, backing away. This is a very, very good sumo basho run here by Smithy. To the arena centre, eventually went off. But that's a very creditable run. Good early tactic here, going to the side of Shunt, avoiding problems, eventually spun off, but the clock had just ticked over 14 seconds. That's a good run. Here come our next furry eared competitors. Keith Sur Williams, Catter sister Catter Julie Ann, boyfriend George Reed, Caterkiller from Adelston in Surrey. Now, significantly, for Sumo Basho, Caterkiller has rubber tracks with aluminium pads for extra traction, weighs 80 kilos. To go up against Shunt, he moves four and a half meters per Robert second. Is. Stand by. Shunt can Three, drag a fully loaded two, Land Rover. One. Activate. Don't go broadside to Shunt. Don't go broadside. Steady push backwards, dodging on this side of the arena. Oh, the writing's on the wall. 
In come Shunts, and down they go. Again over 14 seconds. We last got over 4 seconds. Smiles in the cabin. But once you're in that position, whoops, over you go. Perilously tottering, teetering, toppling. So let's have a look how they got on. Smidzy moves second, 14.11 seconds. Caterkiller third, 14.03. Still to come, eight more robots in Sumo Basho. The Sumo Basho really hotting up now, and there'll be more next time. But right now, it's back to the wars. They were seeded to make the Heat D final. They've made it. Mortis seeded 23. Stake 2 seeded 7. They'd start as my favourites here. Mortis, too unpredictable. Mortis first disposed of Mazakari on a judge's decision. Going through with Iron Ore. Too much damage sustained by Mazakari in the end, the judges thought. Then Crusader 2. Slammed by the great axe, but is that working properly? The house robots came in to finish off the crusade. Meanwhile, Steg 2 were disposing of Kronos into the pit. Then it was Iron Ore. Flipping fantastic. That contest. A hop, skip and a jump. They thought it was all over. It was then. Get that camera out of there, that's secret. <laughs> Nothing secret here in Robo Wars at this time of day, I tell you. We've seen it all, you've shared tools. Yep. And uh, you'll convince you'll make it. Yep. I'm happy we'll be there. And we're stage two as a competitor? Um, don't know, I've never seen the robot working yet, mm. so... Yeah. No, sorry, we've been busy fixing this. Oh dear, <laughs> well that doesn't sound very good said tactically, does it? Oh, uh, we seem to be pretty good at developing ta tactics as we go along. But that's one way of doing it, isn't it? I'm happy to tell you guys that Mortis might not even make it into the arena. They're still banging around trying to fix their axe. Now, uh, are you keen to fight them? Not really. <laughs> I don't think so. Looking at the state of it, we're not really keen on fighting anybody at the moment. But Are you going to hold up? Now, the bulletproof casing is uh, not looking particularly robot-proof. Yeah, we didn't say it was robot-proof. <laughs> Roboteers, stand by. Which is the fitter robot here Two. to survive the heat final? Activate. Mortis immediately on the attack. Have they got any weapons though? Stake two. What is the durability of that bulletproof case? <laughs> yeah. Dear oh dear. Mortis, just off the arena war on the attack. It's not moving smoothly, is it, Mortis? There's something wrong with the control. More than just the fact that it's hung over Rob Knight's shoulders. It's a strange one, isn't it? I'm rather tentative here. Oh, there goes that mighty, powerful pneumatic we weapon. CO2 powered, as we've said before. There's Kill a Lot coming out. And the Mortis lifting arm is raised on high and could well be jammed up there. We haven't seen the axe either. Mortis has no weapons, it seems. Stake 2 has very little manoeuvrability. They have limped their way into the heat final. There goes the axe now. They were simply holding it back, Mortis, were they? Did they suck Stake 2 into a false sense of security? Can they retrieve the axe and bring it down, Stake 2? There goes the big flipper. Hoist still off there, you Mortis boys. Hoisted by their own petard, perhaps. Crunching onto the arena floor. The arm spindly and out of action, just flopping lazily and inactive there. And Mortis once again. A bit not form they can chew here. In the pit, say the audience. I will give them immense credit, Rob Knight, after Chilcott got pulled for the new boy for coming back again. Robot Wars ever present, and they deserve our applause for that. But it's going to be more disappointment for the Nottinghamshire and Cambridge team. Not a lot to talk about. The Mortis Steg 2 have won the heat. Well, another shock. What a turner for the books. Mortis go out. 
Stag two, go through. Come on, lads. What is it with you guys? It always seems to go out. Why? It was unlucky when it landed upside down. We didn't have the things were in the wrong place, so we just couldn't get back over. So the self right arm was out of position. It's already up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you seemed to be immobilized before you got pushed into the pit. What was that? Or was the, or the monster still running? No, we're, still up, we're not upside down. There's nothing we can do with the lifter at the back. You want to try again, lads? Not with this one. You're going to build a new robot? Yeah. Well, we can't wait to see that, because that's probably one of the most expensive robots, isn't it, to build? Yeah, the yeah. next one's not going to be. It's not. You're going to build a cheaper robot? It's been through four wars, this robot. Less technology and more grip. No, more, no. Technology. More, technology. More, technology. more technology. More technology. Well, you were saying to me over lunch that, like, technology... Um, doesn't always pay off because no. things can keep breaking down. Well, it takes too long to get good at it, but we've learned a lot of lessons from doing this one. Yeah. And, uh, Never mind, lads. Eh? I'll see you again next year. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Let's hear it for Mortis. Come <laughs> on! Well, I didn't think its axe was going to do much damage to you because you've been hit. You've been hit by bigger axes than that, haven't you? Yeah, we certainly have. And um. What did you think when you were coming up against another seed and they are a good robot? Were you nervous? Do you think it was going to be curtains or were you confident? Uh, <laughs> just suck it and see, see how it went. Yeah. I mean, did you expect to get this far though? It's not bad in the series semi finals now, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, to start with, but, you know, for my first fight, I didn't think we were going to get very far because we sustained so much damage that yeah. things were just going pants, really. I mean, it was just. But, you know, it's, it's crept back and, um, you know, the belt and braces engineering has, has held out. <laughs> Good luck in the series semi-finals. A round of applause for Steg 2! <laughs> well, we had hundreds of robots banging on the doors, but only the best get on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. Robot Wars returns to BBC Two in a fortnight. They're grooving into the weekend now on BBC One. Spice Girls, Texas and All Saints are all top of the pops.